Hey guys, so today we're going to take a minute and talk about uh, how we bend aluminum. Uh, aluminum can be bent, as you can see here, to cover a window frame or for covering like beams um, or fascia. And so we've just got a practice unit set up in our shop here to kind of practice on. Um, and we've got our demo roof here. And so I just want to show you first the tools that we're going to be using. Uh, the first tool here is called a brake. This is the biggest tool that we really carry around. It's kind of heavy, a little more than 100 pounds. It's about 10 feet long. Um, and this is what we use to shape, shape the metal that we use. Uh, the other thing that, that we're going to need is snips. Uh, snips are kind of like your underwear on a job site. Everybody should have their own. And everyone has a preference as to which style and design they like to use. Personally, I prefer um, straight, straight snips longer than these, um, but these will have to get us by for today. I don't really like this curved style, but some people do. Again, it's personal preference, uh, depending on what you're doing, what type of, or what shape of snips you might use. I've also got my construction pencil. Uh, we're gonna be making a lot of marks to lay out our bends, tape measure, um, and then a straight, just a razor, razor knife. Uh, to be able to score the metal and I'll show you what that means here in a minute um, So we're gonna start off. I've got a couple of scraps here. So we're gonna start off making a piece of fascia um, And the first thing we're gonna do is cut out our piece of trim coil that we're gonna use and The color say you have a two-sided coil the color that you want facing out is Not the side that you would mark for most of your bends. So I'm gonna put my marks here and I always start with a hem is what it's called. And a hem is what keeps the aluminum pieces straight and rigid. So I'm gonna do a half inch hem and then we're gonna make fascia. So it's gonna have a one inch leg. So I add half and one inch together, gives me an inch and a half for my second mark. Um, and then we're gonna make the fascia five and a half inches tall. So that's gonna put me up to seven inches and then another half inch for a hem. And usually I would actually just fold this over, um, but I'm going to cut this off so that we can see what the scoring looks like. Uh, so I put the marks at that end, same marks at this end. And someone who is effective and efficient at bending metal um, is going to be able to add these fractions together quickly in their head. Um, someone else might need to take a little more time to lay out their marks. Uh, but that's just part of practicing and becoming efficient is learning to add those fractions. So kids, when you're in school, make sure you learn your fractions. They're very important if you grow up to be a contractor. Um, so like I said, first thing we're going to do is just score this and break off the little piece that we're not going to use. So I'm going to slide this into the break here. And I usually start choking it down just a little bit to make it a little stiffer sliding in. And I just line it up with my marks, lock the brake, grab my knife, score the piece of aluminum like that. As long as your razor is relatively sharp, one pass down is enough to score it. And then fold up the handle and then we'll just bend this a little bit and it pops right off. So whenever you're bending and cutting metal, anything that you can score and snap is going to look way better than something that you cut with snips. Snips are going to leave kind of rough, jagged cuts. Anything that you can score and snap is going to look nice and clean. So we want to score and snap it as much as possible. So then the next thing I'm going to do, um, because I like to keep, keep this efficient and I want to make the least steps possible, first I'm going to bend my hems and then I'm gonna crimp them, and then I'm gonna do my other folds. So I pull my sheet back out to my first marks for my hems, lock the brake, pull it up as far as it goes. Then I wanna be careful not to let it fold like that, but then I flip it around. Do the same thing on the next side. Sometimes it can take a second to get it lined up right. <clears throat> I 
Again, pull that up as far as it goes. And so what this looks like right now is there's kind of a tight, you can see there's a tight fold on there. And then we're gonna shut, up, shut the brake and then stick those tight folds down in the lip of the, of the brake here. And we're gonna just crimp those right over. Flip it around again and do the other side. So like I said, I like to make this as few steps as possible. And so a mistake that some people would make is they would fold their crimp up, shut the brake, crimp it, then open the brake, put the piece back in, do the fold, shut the brake, crimp it, and that just adds several more steps. So really learning to think ahead of yourself when you're doing this. It's really important to keeping your, your time efficient because every step, say you do this 500 times in a day, every fold and every step is just adding to the amount of time that it's gonna take. So if you wanna be efficient bending your metal, you've gotta really think ahead of yourself. And then for fascia, it's really simple. We're just making an L-shaped piece. So we're gonna do our last fold here. Line up our lines, close the brake one more time. And then we're gonna just pull this up to about 90 degrees. And usually I, I would overfold it just a little and then pull it back just a touch so that it's square. So this is giving us <clears throat> a piece of black fascia. Again, I made this out of a piece of scrap, so it's a little bit uh, dirty looking. But this is what a piece of custom made fascia would look like on one of our job sites. Um, I'm gonna cut a little piece off of this just so we can see what it would look like tucking behind the drip edge. So I'm not sure if this is showing up in the camera, but you can see how the snips kind of leave a little more jagged of an edge. Um, so really I would prefer to maybe score this somehow or use straight edge snips. These ones are um, serrated. Um, but like I said, that's what we have here in the shop today. So this is what we're gonna use for this. Just to give us an idea of how it works. So here's a short piece. If we were installing this on this roof line, this fascia would just tuck right behind the drip edge like that and sit against the subfascia and then we would install it with a couple of fasteners to hold it in place. And once we worked our way around the house, this would look really good. So we made our first piece of fascia there. I kind of walked you through each of the steps. Now I'm just gonna take a minute and make one um, just like I'm making it on a job site. Uh, I'm not gonna really take time to explain, just kind of show you what the pace should look like for, for bending one of these pieces of metal. Um, so I'm just going to lay out all my marks, bend it with the crimp. I'm going to cut the slack off um, or the waist off and we'll just make the piece of fascia to size.
So there you go. That's what a normal piece of just basic fascia would look like coming out of the brake. Um, like I said, we made this one out of some scrap, so it's got some scratches and stuff. We wouldn't install this on a job site, but I just wanted to show you what this would look like.